Shalom. Shavua Tov. A good week. Shavua Tov. A good week. We're looking at a piece of Zohar tonight that explains, like, everything in terms of human service of God. And it's it's a one page. And it's it really gives a lot of hope to the normal people who just want to serve God. They're not interested in fame, and they're not interested in glory, and they're not interested in money, and they're not interested in, in all the shtick, <laughs> as it's called in Yiddish. They just want to be truthful in front of Hashem. You want to talk to God, just like you talk to anybody else with all your being. When your mind and your heart and your soul are one in prayer, the Zohar says, this unites the world. Your mind, your heart, your body, when those three realms are united in prayer, you bring down blessing for the entire world. He says, that to create the at the time when we call to the palace of the king. In other words, we can be calling to God, but there's a palace in the way. There's walls to the palace. There's doors. There's guards. There's blocks. There's cameras. You know. It's one thing to call out to God, but it's another thing to get through the palace, which of course, of course, are the walls, the psychic walls that separate us from the light of the oneness of the divine presence. It's written, God is call, close to everybody who calls to him. Those who call in truth. What is calling in truth? As it, as it has been uh, explained, that truth was given to Jacob, that he knows how to unify God's name in prayer. Now, thousands of pages of Kabbalah have been dedicated to this activity called unifying God's name in prayer. And it's endless. And it was, the Arizal gave his life for this, and Rabbi Chaim Vital, and all the great later Kabbalists, but all the earlier Kabbalists were also doing it, and the prophets and the, and the sages from the times of the Beit HaMikdash. This has been going on, this idea of unifying God's name in prayer. What does that mean, unifying a name? Well, you have Yud, K, Vav, K. That's one name of God, right? And then you have the Aleph Dalit Adenut name, and then you have Shin Dalit Yud name, and you have Elohim name. You have all these different names. And unifying mean, brings the letters together. But Rabbi Chaim Vital teaches us an amazing secret that the only way that the letters will stay together in your mind is if the divine presence is there to, to glue them together. Ein Sof, he says. Ein Sof Baruch Hu, the infinite being, is the one who holds the letters together in your mind. So if you're a person who likes to pray, with intention, with power, with desire, with truth. You just want to be true before Hashem. You want to see His name. You want to know who you're talking to you when you're talking to them, right? That's how you know that Hashem is with you in your effort to talk to Him. And He goes on to explain more. Vadak, pul chanadamaka. This is the true service of the King. To unite his name, which essentially means you're bringing his name, his reputation, into the human realm, through the human intellect, through your mind. That your mind is the conduit for that idea to be brought into the world and spread throughout the world. Now he goes on to tell us, and the person who knows how to unify God's name like this, and when you read this, it sounds like you have to be a master Kabbalist. But listen. The one who knows how to unify God's name properly. He, know, he established an entire nation. One person can keep a whole country going. How? Who is like the Jewish people, right? The Jewish people that are one nation in the land. One nation attached to the one God. But that one person... Now he goes on with another statement about the Kohanim. That if the Kohen doesn't know how to, doesn't pray with that unification, he doesn't unify his mind and his heart and his body and his service. That's his job. He's sitting in the Beit HaMikdash in Jerusalem and all the people are coming in with their needs and their requests and their atonements and their, their troubles. 
And the Kohen is there to take their sacrifices and, and raise them up to God. So he has to know how to do this to be a, a proper priest. But if he doesn't know it, they say, His service is not called service. It's kind of scary if you've spent your whole life wanting to do this. And he goes on to tell us, everything depends on this. That the upper service which is in the spiritual realm, and the lower service, which is in the physical realm, are unified together. So to become a human being that can do this, we have to be, first of all, true inside and out, our minds, the thoughts that we have, the feelings we have in our hearts, and the, and the urges of our body, if you will. That our body has to be focused with our heart and mind, all three in a row. And that's called the true service. So it doesn't mat matter really how many thousands of pages of Talmud or Gomorrah or Halakha or, or Hasidut or Kabbalah you've learned if you don't have that unification going on in your being. Now, of course, all that learning is good. And that, burning, that learning is going to help us unify ourselves, obviously. But the idea is still to get to this simple goal. So a person, what a person, not a person who can't uh, learn all those books. What, he's not allowed, he can't serve God at the highest level? Why not? The Zohar is telling you right now, right here, you can. If you have your heart and your mind and your body aligned. Of course, so we're going to get to the question of how that happens. But the idea that a whole nation receives its spiritual sustenance by the one person who does this work, that, that gives you the shape of the, of the spiritual pyramid of the souls, where the ultimate example, of course, is Moses. One soul that brought all the power into the, into the nation and then into the world through his service. He was able to unify the heaven and earth and the 70 elders that came after him. And then the 12 tribes and, it, and it, the pyramid goes outward from there. So he became the faucet for everybody else. Because when one person connects to that level, everybody else benefits. It has to because that's the way the light flows. Now. And he tells us that the blessing comes to the upper and lower worlds when this happens. Now he goes on, Ki panai. When you come to see my face. Now we know lo terani dam bachai, that we see in this, in last week's parsha that, that Hashem tells Moses, I'm warning you, you can't see my face and live. And here we're saying, come to the Beit HaMikdash and see my face. So what is, what is the contradiction? Where is that coming from? Well, what, what, the, the idea of Living and seeing God's face is that if you see God's face completely, you're going to be absorbed in the light. And that's, well, that's called death when you leave your body, even if you're going into the, the, the light stream of, of the infinite. However, the idea here is also that a person can see, can see the face of Hashem in his own face with his own light. With the light that's shining from Hashem through your face. Listen to how he says. He called Barnaj to Atele Chadashim Akadisha. So any person who comes to unify the holy name. And unifying the holy names, we teach this in my meditation class on Thursday nights on Web Yeshiva. I teach it on, on, on Facebook, on YouTube, on, on Patreon. If you want to learn one on one with me, you could do that too uh, through the Patreon site. But the point is, is that, that, the unification of the name is simply seeing the letters in your inner eye. Your third eye becomes the camera projector of God's name. And then you project the letters on your inner screen. And, and if you know how to mix them together properly, then unify different names. And, and it sounds like, wow, this is like above my pay grade. <laughs> and and in, in the beginning, it feels like it, but it's not really. If you have the ability to sit and meditate and focus and concentrate your mind. And most people do. You know, when people are sitting there staring at their phones and, and scrolling, they're actually focusing and concentrating. But instead of focusing and concentrating on one image that, that is connected all the way up the tree of life, they're connecting to you know, thousands of images that are flying past their eyes. So you see, we, we have a, a kind of lost the, the reins of, of our intentionality. 
of our ability to guide the horse, the chariot, of attention. But when you when you get that back, it becomes a very powerful tool. And right now, when a person comes before Hashem and to unify game, but he doesn't. In other words, this is a person who already knows these ideas, knows these Zohar secrets. And he comes to do the work. And yet his heart and his law, his mind and his awe are not in place. In other words, a person goes to pray and he doesn't do the preparation of prayer is the biggest part of prayer. Is to sit down before we actually say or meditate and to prepare ourselves spiritually, physically, to be clean inside and out, to go to the mikvah, to do whatever we have to do. If we don't do that work and we don't unify the awe of Hashem, the love of Hashem, the intentionality, I'm doing this because God is instructing us to do it and not to become famous or, or, or to become rich or something like that. When a person doesn't do that work, because, because if he does it right, he's going to bless the upper and lower worlds. They throw the prayer out. It doesn't get through those walls of the palace. See, the walls of the palace, again, those are the mind blocks that prevent our intention, our mind, to going up and attaching to the higher soul. Now, oh, and they even announce that this person, his prayer hasn't made it through. And God, God calls upon him, you came to see my face. So it is a noble thing, it is a courageous thing to set your sights at this level. But we have to do the work properly to get the job done. And so in <clears throat> of course, we're some, we go to a lot of, you know, thousands of people go to prayer every morning in the Bacon Asset, and they're running and they're looking at their clock and they have a thousand things on their mind. And it's very, very hard to, in, to focus your attentionality this way and to forget all your appointments and all your errands and all the things you got to do at work. To forget everything except this very moment. And that's part of what's demanded to have this kind of intention. And I believe we can if we just know it. And once we know it, we do it. But if I don't know it or know it, <laughs> how can I do it? <laughs> it says, it's, the Pasuk should read, because you, the, the, they will come to see. <laughs> Why does it add on to see my face? Of course, we're coming to the Beit HaMikdash three times a year. We're coming to the, to the place of the Shekhinah's dwelling to see and be seen. Okay? To be seen by God and to see the wonder, the glory of that place. But what does it say, Lara He asked the same question we had before. Well, my Lara Otpanai, what does it mean to see my face? Ella kol inu nanpin. Oh, no, he tells us many faces. The Malka mitimirin. The hidden faces of God. See, there are many hidden faces. The umka delvatar. In the depth of that place. Hashucha. In the depth of the place of the darkness. See, so the darkness is always trying to steal our intention, always trying to get a get a handle on what we're thinking and, and intending. And these dark faces, though, they are actually the places that hide the light. And what we want to do is take the light back from the hiding. So you see, it's one thing to find God in the synagogue or in the Zohar or in you know in your own heart even, but the dark places. That's where we learn more. Because when we know that, like, let's say a person loves money. It's, it happens, you know. <laughs> Especially when, yeah. Sorry to laugh. But it's just, it's like so much advertising is built around being rich, you know. But when a person loves money, it, that love is not going to Hashem. No, he might love, love God because he made him rich, but it's still limited. So you see, but the inside the love of money is the love of God. He just hasn't stripped the, ve the vessel down. He hasn't stripped off the klipa, the shell of that external love. And it's true with all the fallen loves. But there's a light, there's a spark in there that we need to get out to be free. But first of all, I have to deal with myself and say, look, Avram, stop loving money. Stop loving food. Stop whatever it is that's dragging us away from that focused intentionality. 
So you see that, that, that takes work, but it just takes honesty to sit down with myself and say, look, you know, why do I keep thinking about that, that pool I want to build? <laughs> you know, even if you say I want to build the pool so I can stay in shape so I can serve God better. Okay, wonderful. But not at the time that I'm talking to him. It's like if I came onto this class and I said, hi, Tali, uh, did you know that today I went shopping and yesterday I, I got a new car and it, like, that's not why anybody dials in here. I'm not being with you where you are. See, and that's part of what this is about is being with, being with God when you're with God, when you go to be with God and not to let the mind go off. Now, in our generation, it's very hard because it, we've already been challenged by, you know, 40, 50 years of, of TV. That's, a, that's another attention getter. Now, and all those people that know how to do this unification of seeing God's name in your mind's eye and, 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 and being with it. And the letters don't fly away. They stay with you. They shine to you. Now, in other books, like the earlier Kabbalists, like Rabbi Gikatili and Rabbi the Ba'ala Sulam Aliyah, they explain that the more the light, the letter shines, the more it is coming into you through your eye. So this, this is a, this is a very important thing. And if we, how would we know? If we, if I didn't move to Jerusalem, start digging, you know, how would I discover? Cause I was, uh, you know, getting, getting in there, getting in people's face and asking a lot of Kabbalists a lot of questions. And, you know, and they don't want to answer you either. And a lot of them might not even be on that same page in their service. They're somewhere else. But the point is, is that we have to know that we have that spark of the righteous in us. Even if we're not the most righteous and we don't keep all the mitzvot, we got to do the best we can with each moment that we have. That's what is incumbent upon us. And to constantly try to go further. Now, those people, he says, who know this practice, this teaching, this meditation, they break open all the walls of darkness. And that's when the letters shine. And then the, fa the faces of the king are illuminated. And they illuminate others. So there's that, that symbiotic relationship. When you break through the walls of your own darkness, you break through for everybody else. We're not in an integrated, we're not in a, in a we are in an integrated system where all the souls are connected. When you, you are made to see and you also become seen in the upper realm. Then this blessing comes down for everyone, above and below. That means even the angels get life force from your prayer, from your focus, from your intention. And, of course, human beings down here. And, you know, that's a, that's an important thing. Because you don't need, you know, you don't need the medal. <laughs> you don't need the trophy. You don't need the check. What well, All we need to know is that we're doing what God wants us to do. And if we're doing it the best we can, then, then our life has purpose and meaning and, and uh, you know, things get better. Things look good. And when these blessings are found in all the worlds, that's called seeing his face. That he, you bring Hashem's light down into the world. And when people say, what happened to you? You're so beautiful today. Your, your face is shining. Now, you don't want to fire off and say, well, I've been looking at God's name all day. and <laughs> you know, But you know, you just, just be humble. But the point is, is that's the sign that you're doing the work is when you bring that shine into your life around you. And other people are getting it. Trust me. Your children can get it. Your grandchildren can get it. And it happens. And you'll see it. And the God will tell you. He'll send you a little, a little, uh, a little tweet. Yeah, I guess that's what it's called nowadays. Nobody sends telegrams anymore, right? <laughs> but, but really, this is the work and it should give us all hope for the new week of service, for the new week of prayer and meditation. And you can, and you can sit and do yoga and focus your mind on the, on these names as well. Or you can do it, you know, when you're sitting, you know, in a cab. When you're doing it driving, I would really be careful if you're driving because it might be a problematic thing. Okay. So.
There's gonna there's always a lot more in the Zohar. We're gonna stop here for now, and I'm gonna wish you a good week, a holy week, a happy week, a, a week of purpose and meaning and focus. And if you're here on this class, that means that you have the skill, that it's inside you, or you wouldn't be here checking it out. And and this has been my experience for for 35 years that you know that the people that need each other will find each other because we have the information, we have the sparks that, that each of us share with each other and that brings the light to its to its high point. And then, you know, things get better for everybody and that's the, really the goal of all of this. Why, why be religious? Why be Jewish? Why be a human being if we can't fulfill this work? And we can and we are and we will. God bless. Have a great week. We'll see you again on all the platforms. We do Rebbe Nachman every day on Patreon and on YouTube. Facebook, uh, Insight Timer. I have dozens of meditations over there, and there's more coming out all the time. Check us out. God bless you. Bye.